So are the uh, Clander Cats healthy for this third game? <laughs> as the uh, – I like that. As the uh, – um, as, as you go through the season, I mean, there's always stuff. And that's just uh, that's just what it is. And, and um, even, even though the game wasn't uh, a close – game at the end of the game for the score it was it was a nip and tuck game for a lot of time i mean we, guys got a lot of snaps and so it's just the normal wear and tear but yeah i, I think we're uh, we're gonna be okay any update on sean robinson he's still gonna be a day-to-day guy for us coach can you explain your evaluation of echo boydo through the first couple of weeks he hasn't had an opportunity to make a ton of plays but sometimes for corners that's, that's a really a good bad thing. thing you're on the same page with me there yeah no he's he's just uh rock solid i mean i think he understands in the corner room, I think he's probably the guy that understands things the most. He's got a ton of snaps under his belt. He's uh, extraordinarily fast. Um, you know, he's got uh, ability to make plays. I mean, he's just been really solid. And, and the fact that he hasn't been tested, I think, is a, a testament maybe to him. Have you ever coached a team that picked off the pass in four straight drives? I don't think so. Um, now, I've been a part of teams that have thrown some uh, like that, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm on the other end of that. It's not bad. I like it better on this side. Uh, they're quarterback. Some problems, he's a stud. Yeah, he's he's a really good player. He's uh, extremely sharp, extremely tough. I mean, he took some some big shots last week and just jumped up and you know Rocky Balboa style. And uh, I thought he was uh, showed a lot of heart in that stuff. I think he makes good decisions. He knows what to do with the ball. He looks very very comfortable out there. And he's played a lot of snaps in his career. So I think he's um, he's definitely going to be one of the better quarterbacks that we see this year. How good are they in their RPO game? Uh, I think their RPO game is is good. I don't know if they've gotten into as much of it as maybe they uh, um, plan to, um, but yeah, I think they've got good design with their stuff. Uh, Coach Mavota's, uh, you know, I've known about him for many many years, and he's um, you know really really uh, innovative in the things that he does, and I think he knows exactly what he wants to do, and and so um, I'm interested to see some new things this week. Do you feel like? Not trying to take a shot at any of the other teams, but this might be the most talented offense that you guys have faced up to this point. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I can't say. I know that they've got some really, really talented skill kids with speed, uh, a confident quarterback, veteran guys on the O line. I got a, they got a really solid playmaking tight end. Uh, they got a, a tailback that's tough and runs hard, and um, you know is good in protection and things like that. Yeah, I think he's. Uh, yeah, I mean, these guys are these guys are uh, a lot better than. Any record of the past would indicate uh, this is a scary football team. I mean, they played UMass and Alcorn State, uh, put up a lot of points. Is there any challenges just due to the level of competition they've played of, as far as looking at film this week? It, it's difficult with a new coordinator. It's probably one of the biggest challenges we've had all year. Um, you know, it's a new coordinator uh, on a new team, and, uh, you know, they haven't really been in any competitive games. And so, um, for coaches, it's harder for us to sink our teeth into things that they may do, you know. So it's a, it's a little bit more our players, um, you know, executing with technique and executing uh, the calls that we put in there, and um, you know, us trying to adjust to things as the game goes on. Considering what he went through last season and going through it in the off season, how impressive is it what Sincere Mason is doing right now? Uh, I love that kid, man. He's just he he's just a, a mash unit, kind of walking around. You know, he's got. You know, old man knees, and he's got uh, old man shoulders, and but he's just uh, extraordinarily steady. I mean, I don't know if there's a more intelligent player on our defense. He understands every position. Um, it's hard to catch him out of position, and uh, yeah, I mean, he he reminds me of it sometimes. But uh, you know, he's only nine months out from ACL surgery. You know, some people aren't even you know they're still in the process of their rehab at that time. He's already you know, been playing ball games and hasn't missed a, a thing that we've done since the summer. So um, yeah, just a lot of respect for him. Film review to kind of get to have fun with a guy like that. He kind of basically stole an interception from one of his teams. Well, we we give we give candy out to guys when they get uh, interceptions, and you know we always tease him about being one of the bigger safeties. So we give him celery sticks and carrot <laughs> sticks and things like that. We heard offensive players complain about the conditions last week. As a defensive guy, do the defensive players like playing in that stuff? Um, I don't know if anybody enjoys playing in that stuff. I, I, I thought, you know, that the, the, the I, I, I didn't mind. I didn't even notice it, to be honest with you. I did notice that, uh, you know, the, the crowd was ready to go. And I, I wish that it wasn't so, you know, for such a big game to, to have that weather event happen. Um, you know, when, when you haven't played that team in, in so many years, uh, you kind of probably watered that out a little bit. I thought the guy, the, the crowd that was there was fantastic. It was awesome. Uh, noise was a problem for Missouri early in that game, and, and uh, 
you know, um, hopefully get them back here sometime in the future and, and uh, can really show them what this environment's all about. How much of a problem is that noise when it comes to your defense calling up? That's the opposite end of it, yeah. It's, it's a problem for their offense. It's a problem for our, off, our, our defense. And Coach Kleiman does a great job. We, we practice with noise all the time on defense when we play home games. Um, so we're, you know, talking – uh, non-verbally and through eye contact and through different you know signals and things that we have and um, I think our guys are getting a little more comfortable with that I think that's still a work in progress for us to a degree but um, you know that's uh, we're, we're trying to make that our home is is that that kind of environment and two lines running about 60 percent of the time how much does that lend to their <coughs> RPO and their play fake game yeah I, I think uh, you know for them the, the scariest part is is that the RPO game and the uh, um, you know, the play action Dovers and the boot series and the, you know, all the run action uh, past game that they have. I think that's, uh, um, that's a huge part of how they create explosive plays. And, and if we can minimize those explosive plays, we're going to be okay. With one Josh Hayes and two Kobe Savage back there, just how good of a one-two punch can those guys be? I think they're, I think they're uh, phenomenal. I think they're doing a great job. And, um, you know, they're, they're both new players. Kobe uh, in particular, improved so much from week one to week two. And I know he had a pretty good game against South Dakota, but he was better uh, against Missouri. And, and I think Josh, having missed the South Dakota game, uh, will improve quite a bit be between uh, what he did in Missouri and what he can do this week. Juco guys are sometimes hard to, to find on the recruiting trail. How did you uh, uncover Kobe in that process? Um, you know, he was a late, uh, a late one for us. We were... Uh, um, you know, we'd heard about him through a connection that we that we had, and you know, I went down there personally instantly, and and uh, we, uh, um, you know, I got to know him a little bit on the phone, and just fell in love with his personality. I think his his coaching staff down there had nothing but great things to say about him. Just a tremendously under recruited kid. I think, I think we've been ahead of it a little bit. Um, I think we were hitting the, um, you know, when the transfer portal became a thing. I think we did a good job of not necessarily going to find those guys that are falling from. Georgia or wherever we were, you know, we were looking for the great FCS players, the great uh, group of five players, and and you know we had a lot of success with those guys, with the Tim Horns and that. Um, and then I think people kind of got onto that, and that became the hot thing last year. And nobody was recruiting the junior colleges, so there was a lot of really good junior college players out last year that at uh, you know semester time, and Kobe happened to be one of them, and he fits what we're doing culture-wise. Just a tremendous individual, and uh, we're lucky to have him. Coach, can you explain maybe why? Those players that aren't coming from Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, what have you, have fit really well in your program? Why they have not? No, yeah, well, why the players that you have gone after have oh, fit instead of those players well, that maybe haven't targeted as much? Because I think we do a better job of looking at not just, hey, that's a really good athlete. There's a lot of really good athletes all over the place. Are you going to fit the locker room? Are you going to, uh, you know, are you going to enhance our culture? Are you going to be a guy that's going to be reliable in every aspect as a student, as a citizen, as a player? Uh, those are the guys that we're looking for, you know, more so than the guy that runs 4-3. You know, we'd love to have those too, but only if they're going to do it our way. How is Will Honus progressing, and how does he fit into the defensive structure? Will, Will's looking uh, really good. Will will play a uh, weak side linebacker for us is where he uh, spends most of his time. He could potentially be a, a, a Mike linebacker for us if, if need be in a pinch. Extremely intelligent guy. His, uh, his progress is coming really good day-to-day -day also. What surprised you the most about how, how well those new guys have kind of meshed with the defense in the, in the backfield? I'm, I'm, I'm just excited about the leadership that they're bringing. I think guys look to Josh Hayes as a leader. I think guys look to Kobe Savage as a leader. And they didn't ask for that. That's just who they are. They come out and they show up every day. They're, you know, they're always doing extra. I just got done spending some time with them extra. Uh, I didn't ask them to come in. That's, they just, that's the way they are. And I think that you know they're going to stay after practice and do extra things. They're going to. It's just their habits have been infectious to our locker room, and that's what's impressed me so much about those guys to have that amount of impact in the short amount of time that they've been here.